Hi, my name is Ellen. I am Knits to Stay Sane on Ravelry and Plurk and Twitter and I also blog. Um, on um, Plurk uh, a little while ago, um, Sun Country asked me if I would do a video on how I make spindles, drop spindles, um, using Fimo clay. Um, and there's lots of videos out there that show you how to do it. So I'm not going to go through step by step the every mortal stage of it. Um, but I'll tell you where I went wrong and hopefully that will help. Um, I was going to record this on my video camera but my son has had the video camera and it's flat. Can't buy the charger. Don't you just love them? So we're doing it on the iPad so I'm going to hope that I can get it in one take because I am not that te technically minded that I can um, seam the iPad videos together because you can't press pause. Well, if you press pause, it's a whole new video. Okay, so let's move swiftly on. Um, I have used Fimo twice now to make whirls for drop spindles. You can use them um, for a top or a bottom whirl spindle. Um, but I've only ever used top whirl spindles, so that's what I've done. But um, so long as you get the balance right and the shape right, um, you can stick your whirl wherever you like on your shaft. Um, so let's let's get into it. Um, these are um, spindles that I submitted to uh, Woolfest. Um, the shafts I had originally prepared to make FEMO whirls, use, to use with FEMO whirls, um, but the Woolly Cultural Show came up and you could submit um, in different categories and I chose flowers, so I felted, um, they're supposed to be roses but they look a bit more like lilies. Anyway, I won, I was third to win anyway, so I won a rosette, I was quite proud of that. First effort at felting. So these three spindles here are um, what we're going to talk about later, and that leaves this one. This one is the first one of the first ever Fimo um, whirls that I made. And if you notice, <laughs> I tried to be arty. No, I'm really, really not that arty. And I had this cunning plan that I would make really long worms of Fimo and then coil them together, and it would look really pretty when it when it spun. Um, two things went wrong. Number one, I have a fan oven um, that has a fan oven at the bottom and a grill stroke small oven at the top and I put my Fimo in the top oven and the Fimo says to bake it at 220 degrees C if I remember rightly um, and yes that would have worked in a normal size oven but in a small oven, when the female was that close to the element, it burnt it. So this whirl here is supposed to be navy blue and clear. However, the clear burnt and it went this really queer orange colour. But it's not bad. So that was my first effort. I also have in here um, from the same batch another arty effort and as you can see it burnt just as well. So those are the two. I made four whirls at a time. One um, was sent to my pen pal in America for her to try spindling with um, and the other one is MIA. It's lost. Can't find it. I haven't got a Scooby-Doo. Um, so this is from my second batch and I used a different type of Fimo. Um, well, different colours of female, rather. black and a silvery white. Um, and I use a different technique um, to put the female together in that I mushed the colours together um, before I rolled them out. So, what went wrong? First time I burnt it. There's not a lot you can just say about that. First time it was cooked, properly cooked. Um, however, it is strong and it's um, 
it's fairly rigid but it has a little bit of give which is quite forgiving when you are drop spindling because the clue is in the name and you do drop them. These ones here, um, I was searching the FEMO website and it's made by Stedler, um, a company that makes all sorts of crafty and lighting implements and they have a huge web page about FEMO so I suggest go and have a look and get the tips and techniques as to how to use it. Um, but they have a rolling machine um, that you can buy at significant expense and I looked at this rolling machine and I thought, hmm, it looks to me like a plaster machine. I have a plaster machine. So, second time round I thought I'll spare myself the effort of rolling with a rolling pin and I'll use my plaster machine and even on the fattest setting for your pasta, I think that this rolls too thin. Now you'll see it's not straight but that's another story. It's just too thin, it's too fragile. Um, I didn't bake it long enough, I think I was frightened of burning it and this is bendy. But it's not just bendy, if you try and grab it with your thighs as you're dropping your spindle it'll snap in half. Hence, in my set of four spindle worlds, I now have three, because I broke one in half on the first day. So, unless you have some wonderful pasta machine that goes from really, really thick to really, really thin, I would not recommend using the pasta machine, um, because it's just a hair too thin to give it enough rigidity and strength to survive use. Um, having said that I have spun this single on it and it does spin nicely. Now I've got it on there and it, it seems fairly secure. It spins nicely um, and it spins thin This is a bat dropping sample from Nunoku, who are two ladies from North Wales who make the most divine bats and, and roving. Oh, it, it's like spinning butter, it's gorgeous. So, having just quickly run through what not to do, um, let's have a look at actually how to process the FEMO, but I'm sure you guys know this. I have a silicone baking sheet um, and forgive me I have bits of Fimo left over and um, when Sun Country asked me to do the tutorial I thought I'll go buy more and I thought I don't really want to buy more maybe I'm tight. Um, I have a little bit left over. The Fimo comes in two forms um, they have the heat set, the oven set Fimo, and they also have air dry. Now, I've never used the air dry at all, so I couldn't tell you how how good it is to work with, how easy it was to, is to work with, or how hard it will set, and how long it takes to harden. I don't know, I can only tell you what I've, what I've experienced. But this stuff um, is, it's easy to work, um, and... You can wrap it in cling film and it will keep. Um, again, I couldn't tell you how long it's going to keep for, but I've had this in here for, I don't know, a few weeks and it's still squishy and malleable. So it comes in a, I don't know, maybe two inch square block um, and it costs me maybe three pounds, four pounds a block. Um, so I made four worlds and I suppose there's another third that would go on the end of that and that would be a full size block. I got four worlds out of two thirds, no four thirds, four sixths, four thirds, anyway I've broken a bit. I'm a pharmacist, you wouldn't believe my maths is that bad would you? It's been a long day. So what you do with your world is entirely up to you and how you make it pretty is entirely up to you. There's so many more arty people out there than me. I'm not about to tell you how to do it. So all I do is just kind of squish it together a bit. 
Now, it does take a little bit of working and you will get colour transfer with the dark colours. Um, so if you want to keep your colours true, bear that in mind. Um, I am a firm believer in stomach acid. So this is my baking sheet and I will be using my rolling pin and I just shove it through the dishwasher and it always seems to come out clean enough I'm, I'm thinking. Still fine, still good. <laughs> so I've given it a bit of squish together and now I'm going to roll it. Um, again, I'm not familiar enough with Fimo to tell you how to process it properly but it does have Stedler have a really really good website um, that gives you hints and tips and tricks as to how to use it <laughs> you know it is designed for I don't know, jewelry makers or whatever crafters but you know you guys are inventive and whatnot and I'm sure that we can take this information and use what we need so I'm just working this out roughly circular. If I was going to be a bit more careful and a bit more mean, I would try and get it so that I could get maybe two whirls out of it, but in all honesty, I don't think I'm going to. Um, when you join two pieces together, you, need, you do need to work the joins because they come apart. Um, on, where did I put them? The whirl here. If you look really carefully, can you see the creases? They now that now this is cooked, these creases where I've folded the um oh, it's quite clear on that one actually. Just out there there you go, just down there. That's where I've had two separate pieces together. Um, it's two separate pieces and I've rolled them together and I've not worked the join enough so I'm fine sure if I stick that on a spindle sh on a shaft and have to grab it suddenly that's going to be the point where it breaks okay so now I have my fibro that is I don't know maybe two mil thick it's not quite waffa thin, but it's near enough. Um, and I have got a pastry cutter. Now, the first time I used, I made the the burnt whirls, I used the frilly end because I had a cunning plan. And my cunning plan was that these little niblet bits would hold the yarn um, instead of making a notch after the event for your yarn to go through. Um, I thought, oh look, it doesn't matter what angle you would like your yarn to be, you have got a niblet that will help. Second time round, I used this side, the smooth side, and I cut round it with a knife. Um, it, you know, it's whatever takes your fancy, really. Um, if you look very carefully, there. Can you see just there, there's like a little chunk taken out of it. And with this one, I cut round with a knife and then I used this nibblety edge just to take a teeny chunk out of the edge for me to rest the yarn in, um, in the side of the whirl. And that, that, because I like somewhere to put my yarn, I've got spindles that haven't got a groove and, um, I don't like them as much, I like the security of it. So anywho, so you put your cut your femur out, however you like. I shall wrap that back up with cling film and the child can play with it tomorrow. And there we have our kind of cool and groovy femur. I can it's hard. That's actually not very artistic at all because it's white on that side nearly and it's all black on that side. Anyway, so much for my artistic temperament. No, no. 
Okay, so next part is to drill your hole through the middle. Um, I would recommend at least trying to do it before it's cooked um, because it's obviously it's pliable, it's soft and you're less likely to break it. You, I'm fine sure that you could shove a drill through it once it's cooked um, but how forgiving it's going to be, I don't know what your breakage rate is going to be so I'd much rather do it when, when it's malleable. Take a ruler, find the middle. Okay. Ooh. This is not my ruler. This is an over half ruler and it's upside down. How cool is that? So um, I'm just going to find the diameter, which is 38. Mm. Yep, 38 millimetres. So that's what? 17 to the. There's a radius, do you think? Something like that? Ish. Okay, so. Excuse me while I double a little bit. I'm sorry, you've got my chest. Bear with. So I have a 10, it's back to front because I've got my camera flipped, um, 10 millimetre needle. Okay, so I am going to poke, make a mark on this at 17 millimetres. And then I'm going to do the same again going the other way. And I, ideally that should then tell you where the centre of your um, worm is. And obviously finding the centre is very important so that it spins nicely. So I have poked a small hole through that with my knitting needle and I am now going to gently twiddle there we go. Gently. now those of you who are particularly hawk-eyed will notice that it's ripped so I have deliberately chosen a 10 millimeter um, needle because the when I'm going to talk to you I'm going to talk to you next about the shafts and the shafts that I use are nine and a half mil in diameter so what I'm going to do now is just ease back with my fingers the bump that I've made because obviously the fab the Fimo that we've pushed out of the way by shoving that um, needle through has to go somewhere and it comes out the back as a lump and it's not it's not going to do it any harm it's going to spin just as well it just doesn't look pretty and it's actually something rough that your single and your your yarn your fibre will catch on so I have now just kind of smoothed it out a bit and I'm going to take my rolling pin and gently flatten it back down and in doing that how pretty is that it's also closed that hole up slightly again um, you can tease the hole open a little bit again but I'm really conscious that I don't want it to split so there we go that is our whirl made now, next, you what you do is bake it according to the packet instructions, um, which is, if I remember rightly, it's about two twenty degrees C. What that is in Fahrenheit, I have no idea. Um, I stick it on tin foil, on a baking sheet, stick it in the oven in the middle of a large oven, um, and I cook it for I think, I think it says twenty minutes. Cook it for twenty minutes. Preheat your oven and cook it for 20 minutes. Those soft ones that I made, I put in a cold oven um, and cooked them for 20 minutes and they're just they're just not right. Um, they, they, they do serve their purpose. I can't deny that, but they're just not quite right. Okay, so that is our, well, 
So, <coughs> next is the shaft of the spindle. So, I have two different types of shaft at the moment. I have the pale one, which is pine, and the dark one, which is walnut. Um, the pine one I got from B&Q, which is our local DIY store, and I just went down into their joinery section and I bought a one metre length of dowling. Um, and because I have a man that can, and why have a dog and bark yourself, I asked my man to cut it into four lengths. So I have four, well I had four lengths of dowel that are um, 25 centimetres long. Um, what I did with these ones is, is very, very little. I have, I have a large double, well, a double um, ended pencil sharpener and to make it look pretty, I stuck that end in that end and made and sharpened it. Um, which basically means that it would be ideal now as a bottom whirl spindle. And, oops, while I am no bottom spindler, it actually doesn't spin badly, especially since I've actually got um, fibre on the bottom. Um, and it wasn't designed as that, but it does spin quite well. So, either way, um, it spins just with a pencil sharpener. Um, so, I got my other half to cut it into four lengths, I sharpened the tip, and also in the DIY store, I went to the um, fixings aisle and I bought a bag of cup hooks. There we go. And literally screw the cup hook, cup hook into the flat end of your um, spindle. Now, some of them, some of the wood is particularly hard, and I did use a pair of pliers just to give me a bit more leverage um, to get them screwed in. So that's that. Now then, these ones are my precious because um, my other half is, he likes to turn wood and for Father's Day I took my son to a local um, woodworking uh, shop that sells blanks but what I didn't realise is they sell dowling and they sell all sorts of wood in various diameters. So I bought a length of walnut. So, again, I got the man that can to saw it into four lengths. Um, but this time I actually prepared this wood. Um, I sanded it with four different grades of sandpaper going obviously from, from coarse to very fine. And then I just gave it a very light wax with, I have no idea, it's some kind of wax that he had in his shed. Nice velvet. So, um wiped it on, buffed it off, uh, there's no residue there at all, I really did clean it off nicely. Um, when I was sanding, I couldn't find my pencil sharpener to make it into a point. So all I did was I just sanded around the edge, around, I just sanded the edge off basically. I don't know if you can see that, but I just made it a smoothish edge and I did that on both sides. And again, screwed the cup hooks in. Um, and as you can see on this one, or well, you may or may not be able to see. Can you? A dark bit. This one had a hard bit. I cannot get this screwed in any further than that. But it spins. Even with a knitted whirl, it spins. So, um, yeah. Make your whirls, cook your whirl, make sure the hole is a decent size, okay, so that it just fits whatever diameter dowel you've bought. There are lots of different diameters out there, so know what kind of diameter you've bought. Use your knitting needles um, and make the hole accordingly. Um, what I have done with this one is I have taken super glue. Now, the first time I made them, in fact, this one, is not super glued because I didn't have any super glue that wasn't super glued to the inside of the tube. What I did have was false nail adhesive. It does the job just as well. 
it's super glue. So, um, super glue your whirl on. Now, the where you super glue your whirl is entirely up to you, and it does affect, I think, I assume how how it spins. But I kind of eyeball it to about a quarter of the way down the length, and as you can see, my eyeballing is not that efficient because essentially these two pieces of stick are the same height, and yet the whirls aren't. So about um, a quarter of the way down and super glue it. Um, that's all there is to it. Um, if you want a top spindles, top whirl spindle, super glue it at the top. If you want a bottom whirl spindle, super glue it at the bottom. If you want to use it as a supported spindle, make sure you get a really good point on the bottom of your um, shaft. Um, so that's it. That's all I have to say. So go out there, be creative, um, make yourself a spindle. Um, and not to say that it's in any way replacing all of these super duper artisans that make beautiful spindles, but it will at least get you started um, on the slippery slope to the addiction of spinning. Okay, so have fun. Um, maybe if uh, there's any of, our, uh, any of you out there that um, are inspired, Make some um, post photographs. I have um, a completely unrelated Ravelry group. We're all knitting even stars, but we are the even star cow group, I think, on Ravelry. So come post a photo of anything that you make. Um, post a comment on the blog if you want as to any hints and tips or if you find this interesting. That'd be great. Okay, so enjoy. Mm -hmm.